It is Kirk Douglas's 90th birthday party and his grandson has shown up. And Cameron Douglas says underneath that shirt, his body is riddled with scars and scabs. From needles no longer injecting cocaine, now it's heroin. In fact, police find heroin in his car and arrest him, but he manages to get off with a sentence to rehab classes. He says he gives the instructor of the class a Sony PlayStation and doesn't bother to show up. How much do you think that your parents and the privilege that you had available to you was just making this possible? Well, I mean, I, I think I guess it depends on the person. That you had available money, you were not going to starve, you were not going to be out on the street. Right. His father says it's so hard for a parent to know exactly the right thing to do. What we did is we established a budget, you know, functioning budget, but that budget um, uh, did not include shooting up heroin six times or seven times a day or a $5,000 uh, a week habit. So it didn't matter if he had enough money to get by. He did not have enough money for his habit. Do you ever think maybe he should have gone to prison earlier? Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, maybe if, uh, but, you know, I, 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 I don't know, Diane. So as his dad limits the money, Cameron says he had to do something to get the drugs his body craved. In the past, he's experimented with robbery, putting on a mask, a drug-fueled raid on a liquor store, then a motel where an elderly woman is behind the desk. She only has $20 but he takes it. Probably the lowest point. And now he's going to target drug dealers, and he brings a weapon. How close did you come to killing someone? I don't know. I don't know. I know I couldn't, but I don't know but about... But you had a Glock at one point. In the headspace that I was in during these times in my life, it was definitely a possibility. But thank God it never, it never happened. And at this time, he is also scrambling to learn a new trade. How you become part of the big boys who make a lot of money trafficking drugs across the country. These are real pictures of what he was doing. Crystal meth in bath salts, hidden in gift baskets. His communications are in code, his equipment encrypted. You had burner phones, you had tracking devices. For about a year and a half, he takes in thousands of dollars and believes in his drug-fueled state. He's just too alert to get caught. It was January 2007. This is former special agent in charge of the New York DEA, James Hunt, who remembers the moment his investigators tell him about Cameron Douglas. Not much surprised me anymore, but to think that, like I said, somebody who grew up, educated, wealthy lifestyle, would get involved in the slimy, you know, world of drug trafficking. Significant. De yeah, dealing in like pound quantities. Significant damage because meth is so addictive. You're selling poison, basically. Cameron has no idea the DEA is tightening the noose, even getting a friend of his to wear a wire. But he says even though he is 30 years old, he is so tired, so strung out on drugs, he starts to pray. What did you pray? I prayed, um, I prayed for my family, and I prayed that I would find my path. Sometimes prayers are answered in mysterious ways. A knock on the door at the Gansevoort Hotel in New York City. I'd asked my girlfriend if it looked like they were agents or detectives, and she said, no. And I said, you sure? She said, 100%. And I opened the door to uh, a central casting DEA agent. Here he is, Special Agent Justin Meadows. At that time, he had been with the DEA seven years. That was the moment that I knew that it was, it was over. They actually grabbed me by my shirt and my neck and pulled me out into the hallway. And this is the picture they take at DEA headquarters. To top it all off, I had this T-shirt on that says, yeah, it's really me. He asks to make a call to his father, who answers so happy to hear his son's voice, Cameron freezes. He said, uh, not good. That was about as far as I got. Agent Justin Meadows takes the phone to deliver the news. And what did you say to him? I said, I'll speak to him. I believe he was just in a state of shock. Did you think to yourself, I've just told Michael Douglas that his son has been arrested? The truth is, is that 
It didn't matter. I was speaking to a father at that point. The next, the world sees Cameron Douglas's famous parents. They are in a sea of screaming reporters. Swarming them, pushing them, almost knocking them down. There's no words that can describe the shame and embarrassment uh, that I felt. He is placed on suicide watch. When he looks out the window at the Metropolitan Correctional Center, it has frosted glass, but inmates have used toothpaste to scratch out openings so they can see. You can look down on all the people walking around. I remember saying to myself that one day it would be nice to look up at that same window. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.